Um, yeah, we're in here to talk about the incident that happened the other day at the gym. Okay. With Mr. Wingo. Yes, Mr. Okay. Wingo. Um, we've watched the video, went okay. back through everything. Okay. Um, now we're going to start back when you came into shift that morning, okay? okay. All right. Um, and we've, you know, we've talked to other people, so we've, you know, watched the video, so mm -hmm. we've got a better understanding mm -hmm. now of what happened, what went on, mm -hmm. as before we did the other day, you know, we went into it, we, we didn't have video that day, we were just doing our preliminary interviews, okay. and this is just something we follow up, and, you know, do more interviews after this, just to, for our investigation, okay? Sure. So that's what this is about. Um, so that morning you came into shift. Mm -hmm. Could you explain again, you know, what was passed on to you, his behavior, sure. um, and just you know, kind of slow it down for me so we can understand it, so we can, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it was a Sunday morning. I came on duty at uh, 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. and the night nurse, uh, Yvette Burton, she handed over to me, and she said that Mr. Wingo was, in the night, he was disorderly, and they were going to put him in close-ups. She told me she was going to put him in close-ups. I said, okay, don't worry, I'll look at him, and if he needs to go, I'll put him in close-ups. Um, she went home, uh, gave me a report, went home. Um, I went and sat at the desk. At that time, there was no commotion. He was in room number eight, okay, okay. which is just yeah. a little distance. There was no commotion. And, and at that time, you were where were you sitting in reference to room eight? I was sitting near the uh, officer's desk. Okay. So I sit there, which is about one, two, I would say three doors away from me. He was in eight, okay. seven, six, and fives, just directly in front of me. Okay, there was no commotion. Then what happened is, what well, I got up is, um, the gentleman next to, his bed was at the back, and there were one, two, three bunks, and here's the door. The door was here. And the gentleman on the I would say on the right hand side, Mr. I can't remember his name, Watkins, I can't remember his name. He got up to go to the bathroom and Mr. Wingo got into his bed. So when he came back, um, he said, hey, this guy's in my bed, okay? And Marshall was on duty, she was the deputy at the time. And um, I didn't go yet, that was the first time that I went there. Um, so. We saw the commotion, and he was loud at the time, and Mr. Watkins, this guy, I think it was Mr. Watkins, if I remember, said, I can't remember his name, I think he said, get him out, get him out of my bunk, okay. He got up, and he went back to his bunk, Mr. Wingo. Then later on, let me just see, later on, he came and he moved in between the two bunks, and he was lying there, and that's when the gentleman, Mr. Watkins, I think his name was Watkins, called and said, get this guy away from you because he stinks. And that's when I got up and I went to the window to see. Okay. And I said to Mr. Wingo, Mr. Wingo, go back to your bunk. This is not your bunk. And he scooted back and he went back to his bunk. Okay. okay? Then I went back. Um, I went back and then later on, this guy went to the bathroom again. And that's when Mr. Wingo went into his bed again. And that's when Marshall said, I left to move him to close homes or move him out. And she told him to come. Um, I, was sta I wasn't standing there, I was standing a distance, I think behind the counter. I was standing behind the counter. Um, and Marshall took him out and she called Sergeant Gordon to come because at that stage he was rowdy and loud. Um, Gordon took him, uh, handcuffed him, got him up, he stood against the window and he handcuffed him and I think he moved him to the seat in front of the desk and he was loud, he was talking um, and then they said, uh, um, Gordon said, then uh, Major Harris came and Gordon said we're going to take him to the annex and he walked to about room number 11 and then they said, okay I didn't see it, they said that uh, they're going to put him in a wheelchair, and they okay. moved him to a wheelchair. All right, all right. Let's go back to when you were sitting at the desk over there. Okay. Um, and this is, you know, right when you came in. Was anybody saying anything to you? Did you hear him over the intercom say he couldn't breathe? Did any other nurses advise you of this? No. Nobody no. said anything to you while you were sitting at the desk? No, no. 
No. He was rowdy and he was loud. Okay. He was rowdy but, and he was Yeah, loud. I understand that. But what I'm saying is he didn't say the nurses, I but, but the nurses that were in the infirmary, assigned out to the infirmary, nurses, techs, whatever they were, did any of those say what to me? They, yes, to you read. that he needed to be checked because he could not no. breathe. You, no. you don't recall no, that? No, I don't recall that. No, not at all. No. He was rowdy, he was loud. Um, Explain rowdy. Um, okay. He was loud, he was, um, I don't know what he was saying, he was just disruptive, loud and shouting, and um, I can't remember exactly what he was saying. And that's why Marshall said, I think I'm going to put him in close ups. So Marshall because said that she was going to put him in close ups? Yes. She said, I'll, I'll move him so that he can go to close ups. That's when she called Gordon because he was rowdy and because that guy wanted to hit him because he was on his bunk. And he said, if you don't take him away, we're going we're gonna to hit him. Okay. And Marshall moved what, him out. When was the last time his vials were taken? Listen, probably the night before, I think. I don't know when Yvette does it. I think they do it about, um, I don't know what time they do it at night. And we only do it at about, Eight o'clock. Okay. His vitals are okay. But if he's disruptive, you can't. I don't go near them as far as vitals are concerned. I, Only for yeah, one. And I've seen the video, yeah. and I didn't see the disruptive part. So, oh, um, yeah. Um, just to be honest. Oh. So, um, in the video, there are people that we can see that are employees that they're concerned about him in the room, sure. and they stated that he fell over in the room. No. No, he no. didn't fall at all. Well, I didn't see that, and he never told me he fell. Neither did the other inmates say that he fell at all. He was lying between the two bunks. I don't know, maybe he thought that it was the bed, or he just wanted to lie there. And the only reason I went there is because that gentleman, that Mr. on the right-hand side said, move him because he stinks, we don't want him here. And I asked him to go back. Did any of the nurses say that he what? fell? No, to you? not to me. No, not to me at all. Would it be surprising if some of them did say that they told you that it, they, they I would be surprised, yeah, because I went there. I went to his room. I don't know if you saw that in the video. Yeah, I saw okay. you go. I did go to the room. Yeah, you did. I, went go to, I did go to the room and asked and him to move back. Now, when you asked him to move back, what was his, how did he move back? He moved back with his hands onto the bank. Did that look a little bit no. like not normal and the way he was No, he had, he had a white pants. When I asked him to move, he moved back. He scooted back with his hands. Okay. Um, when when you were talking to him, what what was his complaint at the at the dorm? Room? I didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. Didn't any at the window. All I said to him is, "Mr. Wimpey, move back." And I still went like this and said, "Move back to your bunk." That was all. He didn't say anything to and me like I've got a headache or I feel sick or I'm vomiting or anything. Okay. Well, why were you asking him to move back? Because it the gentleman said, if you don't move him, he's lying. You know, I went there because the gentleman said he's lying here between, he's lying here on the floor and he stinks. That's why I went there and said, please move back. And he did. I, I guess what I was getting at with that is the deputy, why wasn't she over there? Why, did you notify her that he was, there was going to be a fight? Or, because, you, know you know, normally if, if something like that's going to happen, you know, in case we may have to step in to break that fight up instead of you just going to the door and asking him to move oh. back. So that's that's why I was asking. I don't know, I didn't even ask Marshall. I mean, she just, I think she came the second time that he lay on the bunk. She came and she said, I think I better just move him to close ops. Let's move him out of the room. Okay, and um, you said that if somebody's acting out, you don't take their vitals. Oh, no. we, we've seen the video mm -hmm. and he's, I have yet to see him throughout the video acting out at all. Well, I um, think... And, you know, there's people... Has Did anybody mention about taking his vitals to you? Do you remember that? When somebody no. said that to you? No. Nobody said take his vitals. No. Okay. No. I went over there because he was loud, okay? Um, and because the guy said he was lying in between the two bunks. Okay. Yes, and he continued being loud. So... Explain loud to me. Okay, like he was explain, talking. Explain like how he was. He was he was talking loudly and 
I had been already warned that he's going to go to close up because of his disruptive behavior in the night. Okay, and I did so say to him, I will take care of it. If I have to move him, I'll move him to close ups if I have to. Okay. So you don't think you were just coming to an assumption since you've already been warned about that? that you know, he was acting out. Well, maybe, you know, maybe I was warned, okay, yeah. maybe, you know, be careful, you know. Yeah. Maybe, but I mean, Marshall yeah. wouldn't him out because he was, he was disrupted. Would you like everybody's fun? Okay. Um, and we didn't want to fight. No, you don't want to fight. Sure. Uh, I'm just having a hard time recalling that no one, you know, stated his medical mm -mm. emergency to you that, mm -mm. Um, and, and think about this, where, you know, while you're sitting at the computer, mm -hmm. um, you're telling me that no one made a comment to you about him not being able to breathe. No, I promise you, nobody, nobody, okay. I'm not lying, I promise you. Okay, um, and nobody, you're telling me nobody made a comment um, to check his vitals. No. Do you know what his oxygen level was um, um, when he came in? No. I don't you, don't, know. you don't recall? I don't recall. Okay. Uh -uh, I don't recall that. I know they did the vitals the night before. Okay. Well, what happened? What did he die from? What? Uh, it's still on uh, our investigation. Still yeah, okay. it's still on our investigation. Okay. Um, but we're trying to conduct our investigation and we have information. Um, based on video okay. and witness statements, um, that there was a lot more that went on. Talk more? We, we, got, yeah. we have to, uh, not only do we look at stuff, but we got to find out step by step, show sure. everything that, that happened to that show. Sure. We, so why was he down there? Because he was detoxing from opiates. He does IV heroin and he snorts. Was there, Heroin and cocaine. Was there anything else he, that was down there or complaints that he was down there for? Mm -mm. His, Not that I know of, no. ulcer? I just know it was an opiate thing. It yeah. was opiate detox. How about an ulcer? Because that's what, that's what he went down for, was an ulcer. Oh, no. Nobody told me anything about an ulcer. No. Is that because... She, when she handed over to me, she obviously admitted him. When she handed over to me, she said he's for opiate uh, detox and he does IV heroin, snorts it, and mm -hmm. snorts cocaine. The, do you guys normally look through the notes and the charts when you know, train shifts? I normally do because I'm going to hand over to the doctor, okay, and it was right. Sunday morning, so uh, I haven't gone through his stuff at all. I think he was room number eight and we had other people before him. Okay. But I do go through it normally to hand over to the doctor, you know, okay. if there's anything else. But if it's good, she really is good, and she normally puts down everything if there was an ulcer, and if right. maybe he didn't mention it. Wait, you're saying you didn't look at the chart that morning? The I did not look at the chart. No, okay. I did not look at the chart. I just got the report from her. And this happened, this happened, uh, I came on duty, 6 o'clock she handed over to me at about 20 past 6, I think she left. And at 7 o'clock he was already being loud and getting into somebody else's mouth. Okay. Um, and, you know, you say he's being loud. What, what else was he doing, but, you know, besides being loud, what was he? Um, what can I say? Just, as I say, getting into other people's bunk, I suppose, what do you call it? Not being obedient, not following command, you know? I don't know why he wanted to get into the front bunk on the right-hand side. I don't know why. Is it, um, you know, when he came out of the dorm, um, out of the cell. Yeah, out of the cell after. Um, how was his behavior? How was he, you know, how was, how was his, his loudness then? Well, he was still, I can't remember what he was saying, but he was still loud. loud. I don't know what he was saying, I can't remember what he was saying, but he was loud so much so that Marshall, I still said to Marshall, listen, don't open the door. Okay, because I've been in the jail for a long time and Venables, Deputy Venables was attacked and I told her years back, don't go into room three and she did. So again, I said to Marshall, Marshall, don't go in there on your own, get a sergeant, don't open the door. Okay, because he's getting, you know, he's causing agitation with the other inmates. You know what I mean? Don't go in there on, the, on your own. And she said, don't worry, I'll just call him to come. And somehow she got him to come to the door. 
and then she pulled him, no, she didn't pull him out. Uh, Gordon came, and Gordon pulled him out, Sergeant Gordon. Okay. I told him, don't go in there on your own. And after um, Sergeant Gordon gets there, how, how, did, how was his behavior then? Um, I think, I know if he was resisting him, because, um, let me think, Gordon went de got him down and told him to stand up, and he did stand up, and he put his hands on the glass, and Gordon handcuffed him and moved him, I think, to in front of the desk, and he was still loud. I don't know what he was saying, but he was still loud. And then Gordon, and then uh, Major Hayes came, I mean Harris came, excuse me. Harris came, and they took him to the annex, and he walked until about room 11, and they said they put him in a, on a wheelchair. And the next time I had anything to do with him was um, the code, when he was in the annex, the extension. Okay. And you're the head nurse over all of the nurses that sure. are down in the infirmary, correct? Mm -hmm. You kind of mm -hmm. tell them what to do, tell them mm -hmm. what not to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. the code, I was like, who can that be? Is that when they wouldn't go acting out? And I knew it didn't go because the other RN went. Luckily I did. Uh, what conversation did you and uh, Harris have about the move? About who? The move. The move to the, the, move to, the, the to the annex. The um, annex is the extension. The extension, yeah. Um, listen, I had no say in that. I don't I had no say as to where he's going. You know what I mean? They didn't ask me. I mean, that's Marshall and Gordon. They decided to take him to the extension. They could have put him into our close house. Maybe we were full. I don't know what. Marshall decided to take him to the annex. So the extension. You and Major Harris then. So Major Harris, who, who decides? Are you guys able to put? No. It's been so. Who, we, we don't have any input as to where they go, you know? I can't say, don't take him, put him in the... I mean, they could have put him in close-ups right there. Maybe it was full, you know? I don't know, you know? But we don't have any say in you know? I don't say he can't go... You know. That's medical, doesn't have any say. Security moves as they deem, you know? And then, was any of the times when he was talking, was there anything saying about being in pain? No. Because my view of the video is he's in visible pain. And he passed out. I passed know, out? Wait. About six times. That's what he was doing when, yeah. he was, when he was getting on the when he was getting on the boat. He was passing out. He was he, he did it no. one time. One time he was standing straight up and he went flat straight back. Boom! And a, a nurse saw it. Which nurse? Saw the one sitting at the front counter. And she looked up. And she the said, tech saw it at the front counter. Mm -hmm. Tiana. And he fell right back. Nobody told me that. He, I promise he, you, he nobody passed, told me that. He passed that. out a minimum of six times. He went, he went, he went south. How could he pass out and then just come through quickly? You know what I mean? Come. He fell, he fell out and it wasn't a, it wasn't a fake fall. And no one was watching, you know. Okay, she nobody tried. told me that. And then nobody told me that he fell. He, he nobody would, uh, told me that. He went to the bathroom multiple times. Who? The, the inmate. Okay, you know, apparently he was complaining of a female discharge. He had that in an ulcer. I oh, know, don't tell ulcer. Okay, I only read that blood, blood in the vomit. No. That's what he came down for. Oh. Right for out. But you know what? He came down for that and then he changed his tune, remember? He came down and said he hasn't got that anymore. He said, now I've got, uh, P I think it ended up with penile discharge. But I don't know, he never spoke to me about that at all. And nobody told me that he fell straight back, fell out. No. That, I mean, that's what he was doing when he was when they were talking, complaining about him being in his boat. Yeah. It's because he'd be standing there, and all of a sudden he'd just be boom, gone. No. And he'd, and no. He'd fall you out. don't pass out like that. No. I don't believe he, he that. Did it. He he. It's it's on video. So oh. he did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, did. he just passed out and came. It, it's pretty disturbing. And he'd be out for he'd be yeah. out for a, a little bit of time, and then he'd wake up, and then he'd kind of waffle over to his phone. He, just, he was disoriented. Does it show where he comes to the other guy's bunk? Mm -hmm. That's right. He yeah. falls in it a couple of times. When, he, when he's getting into the bunk, he's falling into it. He's not. But listen, if you fall and you faint, 
when you come through, you can't just move off the bunk. No, he would be disoriented for a minute, and it would take him a second, and then he would kind of crawl over to his to his bed. Just like you were saying, he was backing up some. Yeah. That was after he Did you out. see him backing up? That's the only time that I, when I went there, saw him backing up. But the, I went over there because the gentleman was saying he's in my bunk. Okay? And when I told him to go back, he followed command, and he went back to his bunk. Right. And then he came, and he was between the two bunks. I mean, you know, literally what we're trying to find out is what was going on in there. And we, we know it was noticed that he was falling out. Can I say that he was faking it or not? To me, it looked real. And I've seen a lot of people fake it. Um, the, the way he was walking around, hunched over, and just the way it looked, it looked like visible. You know what? Pain. He was upset because he wanted to go to the ER. All along, he wanted to go to the ER. Well, Kind of turned out that he probably needed to. Maybe, but you know, There's no they baby. all want to go to the ER. Yeah, they, they really but, do. I know, but this case, There's there was no baby about it. He needed probably yeah, to go. You know. Well, only because he's died. Otherwise, just, uh, well, that's. I mean, that's. You know, a positive reason. Okay, and no, but there's five on. of them that do it, but one of them. Sure. You know, but okay. That's, but that's no, I mean, you can't see. But that's went to the ER because they want to go to the ER. Understand, you know what I, I mean? understand that. And when he came down, he changed his story. That's that's what we're trying. That's why we're trying to get tidbits from everybody. Everybody's seen different stuff, and okay. everybody's talked. That's why we want to, we're talking to you to see if someone's talked to you about it. Okay. So obviously, you're a charge nurse, so you're in charge. So we got to see sure. if people did talk to you about it. If, no. You know, Nobody told me that he fell, number one, or that he's vomiting, or that he's passed out, or that he's complaining. That's no. a, I'm not for sure if he was vomiting while he was down there, but that was the reason he was coming to their end for an ulcer and for... Okay, he came down originally, apparently, because he wanted to go to the ER. And you know, when they come off for opiates, they want more opiates, so they say I need to go to the ER to get more drugs. Could be, I'm just saying, could no, be, I, you I, know, I that you maybe wants more drugs. I, I and, mean, I've seen, I've been there with yeah, been there. You know, so we can't, I mean, if there's a reason to send him, we would have sent him if he's vomiting blood, or he's would long you, pouring blood, we we'll send, send him to the would ER. Would you send him for a bleeding ulcer? If, if he's, if he's if, bleeding, sure. If there was, if there was an ulcer? If there was and blood and he's he vomiting red blood, yes, sure, right. we would see him. So how about if that was happening in Fort South and he got sent down for that? that well, then the um, officer would tell us. And you know, what we say is, well, if nurse, he is vomiting... the nurse is the one that sent him down for it because she was there, the pill nurse, I believe. Was it the yeah, the pill nurse, yeah, she sent him down. Um, what, for vomiting? And his complaint was of ulcers. Of ulcers. Okay, so that's new to me. But usually, okay, what happens if they say on the pot they vomiting? We usually say give them a red bag so we can see the vomit. Okay, that's all I want to do. I don't mind. You can come down. Let me see the vomit. And when I see the vomit, I call the doctor and say, listen, he's got vomit. Blah 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 blah. And the doctor will say, send him out or start an IV. We're good at well, that. But that's what, and that's this this situation is before. You Before came I came on work, so, so that's something that we're trying to look into to see what the, the circumstances are with you being the charge nurse. So um, did they? And I'm not super familiar. Was there blood in the vomit? Is that what was said for coming down, or was he saying that it was just complaining of ulcers when he came down? The blood in the vomit was several days before that he was complaining about. Um, and while in custody, yeah, yeah, while in custody. Yeah, because he was given a, uh, a shot by the doctor. Oh, that's his, a few nausea. days. Yeah. Okay, that's right. a few days. And, and that's when he was in Bury South. Okay, okay, yeah. he was given Finnegan. I remember, I remember yeah, he was he given. Was, oh, yeah, I, I think somebody told me they gave him Finnegan. It yeah, was, so he'd been thrown up for a few days. Oh, I don't know about a few days. Yeah. I mean, if you get Finnegan, if you vomit once, we'll give you Finnegan. Right. You know, we don't A shot of it? Sure. I don't know that's I don't know. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, I know my wife took it when she was pregnant. Sure, yeah. Feeling good, good stuff. But, um, so when he came down, he changed his story, apparently. That's just what I was told. I didn't read the chart. So, when, when you came on duty, did you have, besides walking up to him and telling him to mm -hmm. back up, mm -hmm. did you have any contact with him that no. day? No, no. No contact no. with him? But I did hear. I did hear a noise in, I did hear a noise in room eight, you know, I did hear a noise in room eight. But and I think Marshall, she did, maybe she did one or two rounds, I don't know, I can't remember. And I was So you only, you only heard a noise? 
uh, heard over loudness, you know, cursing and get this guy out, da 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 da, you know what I mean? And when I went over there, as I say, when I went over there, he was between the two bunks and he was lying. And this guy said, Tell him to move away because he stinks. Do when you not do interview you? the inmates? You don't interview them? Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. everybody has been interviewed. So okay, okay. Um, that's where we're kind of at this point. So, yeah, how long were you there before you got moved? Uh, on duty an hour. Okay, so you, you got moved just before seven. So you were, you were on duty for an hour. Yeah. And then when you came on duty, mm -hmm. your pass on from mm -hmm. the Night, stop. night charge nurse, yes. or is that charge nurse do the back on to each other? Yes, yes. Okay, so we, we do the charge, we go check the drugs and then she passes. Wait, you took drugs? We check the drugs in the lab room. Okay, but make sure that they were... That all the drugs were right. Right, it's not, so no one takes That you didn't use something gotcha. in the night and didn't write it up. Okay, so, so so when you come on, you talk to the nighttime charge nurse mm -hmm. and tell me what she told you again about it. So she told me that the guy in a, Mr. Wingo, uh, she was going to put him in toe stops because he's been disruptive in the cell. And I said, oh, and she said, uh, he wants to go to the ER. I think he's drug seeking. He's opiate detox. He's IV heroin and he snorts heroin and he snorts cocaine. She said, I was going to put him in toe stops. And I said, okay, I will see how he is and if he needs to go, I'll do it. From that point before so, that, before when you did that, that thing, from that point back, do you had, had did you have any knowledge of this inmate at all? No. Okay, so you didn't know you had no dealings with any of his prior stuff at the jail. No. And then when do you guys start looking into each inmate's um, profile mm -hmm. as the day? So because he would have been a new one. He would have been a new one. So yeah. would that have been something to where <coughs> profile would have been started for it, or is another, so, since you're the charge nurse, is there other nurses that are, are involved? Would there have been a nurse involved with him for that prior hour you, you were there? No, I don't think so, no. I mean, there's two nurses. The one does, um, she goes and does insulin as soon as we come on at six o'clock, she goes and does insulin, which leaves one other nurse, which was Shay. Shay was pulling meds. She was pulling meds. So she pulls meds between, I would say, 6, 7, maybe quarter past 7, 7.15. Mm -hmm. She pulls meds, okay, puts them on the card, gets them ready. Um, what I normally do is I usually start going through the chart. So when the doctor comes, I can hand over to the doctor. I go through each one to see the day. But he's already on his detox. He was already a few days on his detox, I think. And then, um, so he was still on his detox, as far as I know. In what time of the day would he, since he just came down, would he have seen the doctor? Did the doctors come in at what time? At about 9, 9.30 mm -hmm. on a Sunday. So would, they, would he have seen a doctor that day? He would have seen, no, we would have seen him first. We would have seen him when we did his vitals. So what happens is that about, as soon as she's pulled the meds, and the, the second nurse comes back, we all, we my, we my desk is, we do the vitals straight there. We give them a medication, do their vitals, any um, dressings that need to be done, any blood sugars that need to be checked, we do it right there. So and where the, where the officer sits, so it's right on that little corner. So right he, didn't, he didn't make it to the no. med time for where you do He that didn't make it to the vitals, which will be maybe half past seven, seven thirty. Quarter to eight, we do it. So, because he was moved at seven o'clock, they moved into the okay. extension. So, at a normal time, when you get in, you get your pass on, mm -hmm. and then you guys would start preparing your stuff mm -hmm. about seven thirty eight when, or eight or so when <coughs> the cart's loaded for medical. You would I would say seven thirty. Seven thirty. So at seven thirty, uh -huh. you would then start. Then Jennifer will bring her cart, and we'll start doing everything. We start from one room and go right and through. You go all the way through. All the right through. And so at that time, he did not have any of his vitals. No. no. And then when you, I've heard from prior when I wasn't here for, but and you said that he was rowdy. Mm -hmm. um, was he? Was he in your mind rowdy or then? Um, or not to take vitals before he went down there? Or would that have been, say a guy's leaving, if someone's leaving your 
um, fit to go to a pad. Is it a normal thing to take vitals? No, because no, so normally they move them when they're disruptive. Do you understand? Okay. They're arguing and he wants to go to the ER and lay out and one. Mm -hmm. So don't take vitals. So that's that. not a well. You, that's not a standard. How about how about if it's a uh, if it's a compliant patient before they leave and they move somewhere else? Is their vitals taken? Um, if they are moving him, I mean he's a medical patient. Why would they be moving him to the annex or the extension? I don't know. Saying, they wouldn't move him because he's a medical patient. I know, but but it, I'm saying that on a normal stance, a person that's moving out of the moving out of the infirmary. Is that part of the, the um, process that we the firmly would be vitals before they left? No. If they're close up and they're cleared by mental health, they go straight to the point. We don't do their vitals right. if they're cleared because they, they want to kill themselves. Right. So when they're cleared, they go straight, so straight about, to the point. So how about a medical patient? I mean, a medical patient, well, we do all the vitals. We do it once in the morning and once at night. How about if they're moving, if they, if no. they get cleared? Well, if they get cleared, so the doctor comes, does around, clears them, their vitals have already been done in the morning. In the morning. Unless so, they've got high blood pressure or there's some reason why we have to recheck it, then we do, no problem. Or blood sugar, um, we recheck it. I'm learning from this too, that's why sure. there's so many questions because sure. I'm trying to, to figure it out. So, so in, in my mind, are you, we, are you saying when, I, I'm not doubting that he was okay. saying, words and stuff, but in my mind, are you uh, thinking and being a little bit more precautionary of saying that he was rowdy because of the because of the nurse statement prior saying he was disorderly? No, I think I heard him. Right. I heard him being well, disruptive. I mean, being, dis being disruptive as in uh, as being loud talking. No, what as in um, cursing. Right. Right. Well, that's what I mean okay. by loud talking. Cursing. Um, was he was he fighting like uh, no. was he? Um, he wasn't fighting at all when he sat down. No, he wasn't and, fighting at all. So, what I'm trying to get at is, would the vitals been taken either way if he wasn't if he was compliant? His vitals would have been done when it was no, his no, no. turn. Yes, I understand okay. that part. If he stayed in there, yeah. But I'm saying that because what what I'm looking at is, would his vitals been taken? if he was leaving out of there? To go to the annex? Yes. No. They so would only move him to the annex or to close up if he's disruptive. Right. But that's, that's, what, that's, that's, that. that's what I'm trying to figure out. I, I was, I'm trying to figure out if there was, if it's a, a, a standard normal okay. thing that happens when anybody leaves, are vitals taken? Yeah. Or if it's you guys take, your your vitals are taken at morning time? In time, time. Correct. Yeah. Unless the doctor says he's got high blood pressure, we check it, do it again. Then we would check it. Yeah. But if he's moving because he's disruptive and he's loud mm -hmm. and he wants to go to the ER, no. In fact, we're scared to go near them because you never know they'll attack you or hit you. Perfect. You know what I mean? I understand. Oh, I don't go near but, them. But that's what, and that's why I keep, because I'm trying to wrap it, I'm trying to make sure I understand that if they leave out of there at any circumstance, you're saying their vitals wouldn't be taken necessarily. It's only you take them at 7:30 in the morning, and yeah. probably what 7:30 at night. I would sure. assume it's seven or eight hundred the time they do it. As soon as it settles down and they can be, remember they're going to be done when it's compliant with Marshall. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. With the deputy, right. well, she's got other stuff going on, and if mental health is out, she can only bring out so many officers. Right. So we wait until she says, "I say to her, can we do? You know, can we do the vitals? Can we start?" And she'll tell me when everything's calm, okay, I can bring two or three people out. She just brings two at a time. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I got it now, because okay. then, then I got kind of where I was trying to figure out where we were at on. And tell me the, the, the stuff on going into the pad. Is, is Are they supposed to be checked when they go into the pad? You know what? If they, okay, but normally, no. Because they weepy, they're agitated, some of them are aggressive, some... Mm -mm. I don't, for me, I don't touch them. I really don't. Unless they call and they say, listen, okay, otherwise, no. Now, but and most of them refuse. They say, I don't want to talk, I don't want to answer your questions, just leave me alone. And I put them, will not answer questions, won't answer, because I've got to admit them. Mm -hmm. So everybody who goes into bed, I've got to admit them. So, do you understand? So the, would you say the only time that you would te check on it? make that went into a pad or something is if they're put it in a chair or if they're or if they released or if they're, they're released, released. Okay. Other, <clears throat> otherwise the office unless they fight if they get into a fight 
or they start bleeding, or they vomit, or they jump from the top, or whatever, then we would go in. So, otherwise, so when he went into the pad from leaving from your guys' is to that extent the pad, and he was nothing was going on different. It's unnormal that it would be unnormal if he did get checked for vitals or checked on him because he's not in a chair. No, he won't be checked. If he's if he's taken from room eight to that extension, he won't be checked. No, that is not the normal because they're moving him because he's disruptive. Okay. So, so the reason his vitals weren't taken is because he was disruptive. Sure. He wanted to go to the ER. And well, that goes against what we're what I was asking because because I want. It wasn't because he was disruptive. They moved him because he was disruptive. No, they and moved the him. Gun? They listen to me. I'm not trying to. I'm okay. not trying to trick you. Okay. They his his vitals weren't taken mm -hmm. because he was disruptive. At yes. The time. Yes. It, they were. They were not taken because he was disruptive. No, well, that's kind okay. of contradicting what we are okay. in process. Because you were putting me under the understanding that vitals are taken at 7:30 in the morning. Yes. 7:30 at yes. night. Yes. Yes. So vitals weren't taken because he was disruptive. It's well, vitals was, weren't taken on him that day because we hadn't started doing it, number one. That's where. Okay, we hadn't started, started doing it. That's where I'm. Yes. You were, I, I don't know if okay. you were taking confused. Okay. Because vitals weren't taken because he was disruptive. Vitals are taken because he. 7.30 is when it happens, he was taken out because the vitals are taken when the nurse does his meds and they yes, come out and check Yes, it. yes, and everybody can and see vitals. And you like guys that. do not check people's vitals when they are leaving the infirmary to go to, to the extension. extension. No. And then no. his vitals were not checked at the extension because no. that is a, not a normal thing for when they're putting no. them in there for that case. Yes, no. Okay, see, we were, okay. you were going... The other you way were on the disruptive okay. part, and okay. you've already told me that, so I'm, I want to clarify it to make sure. Okay. But it, that is what we just said is the correct way. Sure. I'm not sure. If that's I'm sure. Okay. Because <laughs> that was one of our, our our things that we're looking at was what was the where they're supposed to be vitals taken, where they're not. And you know, apparently there would have been vitals taken if he would have been in the dorm at that time, at the time of you guys doing it. Well, he would have, if he stayed there, he would have had it done at 7.30. He would have had his vitals done like everybody else at 7.30. We'd give them, fill up their picture, give them their meds, and if they need blood sugars or wound care or anything, we'd do it all one time together. And tell me symptoms, symptoms and um, habits and stuff of a detoxing opiate, opiate guy person. Okay, opiate guy. Um, they're agitated. They are drug seeking, okay? And they remind me of a cat in a cage. I think that's the best way to describe it. That they just wish that they could get out. They're agitated, they're aggressive. Um, they're drug seeking, they want the drugs. I mean, sometimes they their blood pressure elevated, they can have you know, sweating, um, and they curse and they fight and they want what they want. Okay, and so when you were when you were uh, given the charge nurse thing, mm -hmm. you were not. Were you told at all about an ulcer? No. With this guy. Mm -mm. And, but what did they tell you? She was telling you about this guy because it seems like this guy stood out. Okay. Well, she did, it, did, he, did, it, this, did this guy stand out on her her uh, pass on? It did. It did okay. because she said to me she was going to close something, but she didn't. She said I was going to put him in close ups because he, the whole night he's been cursing, saying he wants to go to the ER. And she said, uh, he's um, IV heroin, he's OB detox, IV heroin, snorts heroin, and snorts cocaine. I said, oh, and she said, all he wants to do is go to the ER. And she said, I think he's drug seeking. She said, I was going to put him in close up, but I didn't. And I said, okay, I will look at him, and if he needs to, I'll put him in close ups. I don't have a problem with that. But when you say that, is that your decision? Is that a charge nurse decision to put him in close up? Sure. If he's if he's disrupted in the cell and he's going to cause trouble, move him out. Sure. Okay. Sure. Do you, what do you have to do to to do the close up? Do you have to get you have to fill out a form as to why you're putting him in close up, and you explain disruptive, um, fighting, causing trouble, move him, and their mental health sees him. Did someone fill out a form for him to go to the pad? No. No. Why, what's the difference between you? You know what? 
Um, I did not fill it out. No, we didn't fill out a form for him to go to the pad. But is there Marshals a should have, or I should have, I suppose, but I okay. didn't. So, so there should have been a form. There should have been a form that he was disrupted to go. And that's what would have been taken to the pad for, sure. for that? Sure. Yeah. And is this, a, is this something that you would, uh, not that, that you have to talk with Watch Commander about this? No, no. The, you don't have to tell Watch Commander. No. Okay. Anybody can put them. If they're not compliant or they're fighting or that they're disruptive, put them in close ups. And their mental health sees it. And usually they're referring um, to Dr. Hindash, get him on some medication, give him some Vistrol or whatever, Benadryl, to calm him down. She's a bit new. Yeah, I worked, I worked in the infirmary for a while. And I was on shift four by myself. And it's, uh, Did you? So you yeah. know it. Come on, you know how it is. Oh, yeah, I know exactly how it is in the infirmary. Yep. You know. And Carter, I don't think he's ever worked in the infirmary, has he? I'm not sure. Yeah, he's, he was he's here seen. way before me, okay. so I don't know. He was, yeah, he's a few years ahead of me. So oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Sunday. Okay. I'm told Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and this week Wednesday. It's not horrible. So you work four and th so you're kind of on the jail schedule too, like a four and a three or no, no, we work twelve hours. But do you like but do you work four days at a time and then four days and three then days off. three days off and then uh -huh. three days okay. on, four days off? Uh uh. I do Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, every week and usually every Wednesday as well. Okay. Does it show that he falls back green? Oh yeah, several times. Yeah. 
several times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Uh, and it shows him getting into the bunk, right? Into that gas bunk. It shows him moving back to yeah, the bunk. Yeah, because he, he can't stand up because he's, he's so weak. No. And that's why he crawled back to his bed. No. Okay. Listen, he got up and walked to Marshall. Right. He got up and he walked to Marshall. He walked out of the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I and guess we've seen all that. Yeah. yeah. And then he lays on the ground. Oh, he lay on the ground because he didn't want to get up. He lay on the ground. Is that after he was cuffed or before he was cuffed? He didn't want to get up. And that's right. And Gordon said, come on. I heard Gordon mm -hmm. say, come on, get up. Get up. You can move. And he got up. And then Gordon took him and he sat on the chair and he was still loud. I don't know what he was saying there. I don't know what he was saying, but he was still loud. And then Gordon then... Loud and like screaming? I want to go to the ER and you people don't... So he was like it. screaming? Yeah, he was shouting, yeah, I want to go to the ER and I don't know what else he was saying. And then Major Harris came and they took him. Listen, I had a guy once who came from the annex. Sergeant Brandon was with me. Listen, he sat in the chair. He was laughing. He came, I don't know if you heard about him. He, <coughs> came, he laughed coming to the infirmary. He yes. sat in the chair. And he died just like that. Sad. Very sad. Very it? sad. No. Did you already have your mindset that he was detoxing? 
Uh, I knew it was detoxing, yes. And because they said that, did that, did that just pass that on from, from another, that stuff? Well, yeah. from another medical emergency? In your mind, already thinking that he's just detoxing? Would, did that change your mind as of being a medical, a true medical emergency? Because that's what looks like is happening. Mm. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, because I mean, he's detoxing. He's on detox meds. Um, but he, he him acting out. He um, had a because where I'm getting at is if I know we have cry wolf it happens a lot. What's cry wolf? What's it mean? Well, like uh, he wants to go to emergency. Sure. Get dope, so sure. And, sure. And it happens. Sure. But we just. We assume that that's what was wrong, and in, in, in actuality, that's not what was wrong with him. And so, I'm just trying to figure out if you would have looked at the charge or the, the, charge. the, the sheet, okay. and it came up that he had uh, prior. He was throwing up constantly. Um, he was giving finagrin. He was uh, complaining of an ulcer. And mm -hmm. would would that be something that would look into where okay is he crying wolf or do we need to send him out to because he's acting up? I would act up if I was if I was locked in a room. I would also act up. I would. You, you know what I'm um, saying. So I would say I was warned maybe. Okay, <clears> but <throat> he's acting out. So I sort of expected him to act out. You know what I mean? You know, um, he wanted to go to the ER. Um, the nurse at night didn't think he needed the ER, okay? Um, and she was going to put him on close up, so I said, I did say I would handle it, okay? Um, and as I say, I never had, um, when I came out, he was loud. Um, and as I say, I only went there when he got into the other guy's bunk, okay? Told him to, and then um, this guy said, move back, he moved back, and then when he lay between us, when I went and told him to move back. But he didn't look, he didn't look like he was in distress to me. He followed command when I said, go back. Mr. Wingo, go back. And I still went like this with my hand, go back to your bunk. He went back, he scooted back. When he was, when he was standing up, he was hunched over, <coughs> walking around. I never but saw okay, that. I never saw that. Yeah, he, he was hunched over. I never over. saw that. And, you know. The but he got up to walk to Marshall, when Marshall told him to come out, OK? He came out, came out the door. Gordon told him to put his hands <coughs> on the window, which he did, and then he went down, he didn't want to get up, and Gordon told him to get up. Did he fall down, or did he? No, I don't know. I don't know if he fell down. Or, or to, uh, I, I can't say that, because I just heard Gordon telling him to get up. Was Gordon touching him when he fell down, or when he went down? I don't know. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I'm sorry. I didn't see that. Okay. Okay. Right. You can call. Did you get a ride?